Hi, welcome to Inspiration Daily for February 5th, 2022. I'm your host, Gina Greenlee of ginagreenlee.com. Today's inspiration is Living Well with Depression, which is also the name of a new playlist that I am beginning. I do not know if that's going to be a daily upload like this, for which is Inspiration Daily, but um, we'll see what happens. Part of the point of Inspiration Daily is, is to be open to what inspires us on a daily basis. And I, I'm doing that by modeling it for uh, every day for a year, beginning on October 5th, uh, 2021. So being open to what inspires me and seeing what happens, no expectations. I may do something with that inspiration. I may not, it, it, it just may be an awareness. Uh, today, what happened was I've had in my mind actually for quite some time to do a blog, a video uh, blog about living well with depression. And the series, Inspiration Daily, in part inspired it. Also something that happened to me today inspired it. Uh, as well as uh, recently, a number of, well, yes, yeah, some, some high profile deaths by suicide and some high profile people who, who are struggling with depression. So it's really an intersection of, of those dynamics. This um, blog, the experience that I'm about to tell you with, tell you about that happened today and how not only people who are well known, but how the pandemic has reshaped American society. I can only speak to what's happening in this country since that's where I, I'm from and that's where I'm living. Uh, there's an awareness about mental health that, and, and there's discussion about that in this country that is happening at a greater level of compassion, empathy, and depth than I have experienced it in my 61 years of life. And that that's a good thing, actually. The pandemic has uh, hastened much awareness about so many aspects of American culture and our institutions, how we work, our disc or national discourse, our health, our relationship to our own bodies. And that includes a different, a different, I'm, I'm seeing an evolved if I, if I dare say that, a, a more evolved, <laughs> incremental, you know, progress is progress, a more evolved disc, national discourse about mental health. And, and I'll talk a little more about that um, as this series evolves, but I'm at minute four, so I wanna launch. So that's the context for the series. That's what the, I've named the dynamics that have inspired this playlist, Living Well with Depression. And another dynamic is the fact that I do live well with it. I want to share that depression is uh, multifaceted, multifactorial. If you've met one person or know one person or love one person who is experiencing depression, that means you know one person who's experiencing depression, no two lives that are affected by depression are identical. So, and I didn't always live well with depression. It was a journey. So 
that's the first thing is that you this is this is chronic in some cases it's acute and we'll talk more about that and for people who live with it chronically there are acute triggers and for other people who do not live with depression chronically they can have situational depression and I, I have friends who've experienced that mine is chronic it's lifelong it it, it started in probably in the womb and we'll talk more about that later um, but certainly it was a hallmark of my childhood and I'm now 61 years old so the other thing I want to say if you if I appreciate the discussion that's that that's occurring in the United States if you look at for example a chronic condition such as diabetes I used to be a diabetes educator actually I have a master's degree in um, public health and it and education and I started my career as a diabetes educator and so um, I I've, I've worked with diabetes uh, patients uh, at uh, in in hospital education programs so they did not come in with a with an acute incident related to their diabetes like ketoacidosis or um, you know, a really, really low uh, glucose count where, you know, they had passed out. Uh, but they were actually in, in this hospital for a week. Their, their diabetologist, their physician sent them there to, to learn to work with a multidisciplinary team of health educators, uh, of which I was a part. And this goes back 30, 40 years to learn how to live well, to learn how to manage it, right? Because there's no cure for, for diabetes. Um, and now, and certainly 30, 30 some odd years ago, how insulin, the mechanisms by which for those who were insulin dependent, because not all pe people who have diabetes are insulin dependent, but for those who were insulin dependent, there are multiple mechanisms. There was, we were at the, be not really the beginning, but we were on the road to the evolution of how insulin is delivered the, because the pump didn't always exist the pump was a fairly that was a fairly new conduit for for insulin for administering insulin i don't know you know 30 some odd 40 years ago so i worked with diabetes patients or diabetes people who had diabetes because effectively they weren't patients I mean, they, they came in with no acute they were there to learn how to live well with it how to understand how behaviors such as exercise affects their blood sugar decreases and so how you need to adjust your medications as a result of that yeah so we had people who were who were elite athletes who had diabetes and then there were people and so, you know, how everything that was going on with their body, including their high level of, of, exer of, of physical activity, had a, they, need to, they needed to really understand how that affected their blood sugar levels, their blood glucose levels, and how to, to recalibrate nutrition and uh, and medication and they needed to understand how stress levels affected their, and the hormones associated with those affected their blood glucose levels so I, I take all the time to mention about diabetes as a, as a, as a chronic illness because with um, with which people can and do live uh, very well some people don't manage as well and there's again it's it's a highly multifactorial multifaceted conditions very complex and what I find heartening in the United States right now is is the the discourse around folks are calling it you know mental illness and that's a huge category so I, I'm just talking about depression um, within depression that is very complex there was a time I remember when you would share you know carefully that you suffered or you know you lived with depression and and and, and i was judged you know to pull yourself by up by your bootstraps so you're making it up or, uh, 
And it's a real thing that's going on <laughs> in the brain. So, and there's a complexity to it. And so to, so just like one who lives with diabetes, a chronic um, condition that is multifactorial, multifaceted, um, and, and, and with which you can live well, if you do so with intention, if you educate yourself and you, you learn about different modalities and, and different ways to take care of yourself and then you map that to what you know about your body and some people don't know about their body and so that was part of uh, what our education team did at the diabetes treatment center in in new york city this was like a million years ago when i was in my 20s and and so to say oh okay so that's that's what we know about uh what happens in the pancreas when you know with you know how insulin is, is uptake happens when you've exercised for 40 minutes you know or whether you run a marathon and how you know so it's it's the same thing with depression i'm glad i'm so glad to hear it's not like just pull yourself up by your bootstraps you know we started to have this conversation around men and women who experience um ps PSTD, right? Yes. Um, or P, I'm sorry, PTSD. PTSD uh, in response to their experiences uh, with with war. And as for a long time in this country, we did not acknowledge that. And so, and now it's it's moving beyond that particular population. And it is it's it's really complex. So I'm glad I'm glad that. The discussion is robust and uh, there's an understanding that it's not like, you know, you, you know, that what was that movie Moonstruck, which everybody except me loved. I, 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 I didn't get it. I didn't get the whole hoo-ha, but there, the classic scene when Cher slaps Nicolas Cage, you know, eh, snap out of it. You know, that's, that's what people used to tell you, right? Um, the sixties, it snap out of it. You know, you're making it up. And of course, if you were a woman, well, it was all hormonal. You were, um, hysterical. You were making it up. You were using it to get attention. I mean, so we, we have, we've, we're, we are evolving and it was slow until the pandemic, the pandemic just kind of blew the top off of all of the stuff we were sitting on in American culture and I actually think it's a healthy thing. It's it's hastened discourse, and it's and by extension, I see hastening action that is long overdue. So um, anyway, that's the introduction to living well with depression, and so I'm going to leave it there because I'm at 13 minutes. And the next installment of Living Well with Depression, so I'll call this intro, will be, it's my little preview, it's what I call Rightful Geographic Home. And I did, excuse me, Living in Your Rightful Geographic Home, and I did do um, a video on that. However, I didn't relate it to Living Well with Depression, and I'm going to do that for the next Living Well with depression video. Thanks for joining me and for listening.